Yeah. So um, what's your funniest memory behind the wheel? Uh, it's at the Nürburgring. Um, I drove, it was a morning stint. I think it was, I think it, it was, it was in the pitch black. I believe it was a morning stint. Like, yeah, it was in the morning. It was like four, four thirty in the morning. It was like really dark, uh, just before sunrise. And I came down a place. So this is both like scary and funny. Uh, so there's a section towards the end that's called uh, Schwalbenschwanz, and it's like fifth gear. You're going pretty fast, and you're dropping down a big crest. You you sort of feels like you're on one wheel, and you're coming just like over. You're coming through a re really fast fifth um, gear corner, um, and just like up to this crest that you just have to like drop it down precisely to go through like a couple of you know S's, but just you know you're just going straight down the center of it, um, and when you come over there. It better be a clear track, right? Because you're airborne so long, or your your tires are unloaded so much until you land, you can't brake. So you're you're traveling a lot of distance before you can like correct if something is going on. And I came down there, and there's just like a thick wall of smoke across the track. I can't see anything. The headlights just go into like this wall of smoke. And I'm like, I'm on the brake already in the air. This Porsche had you know our ABS brake, so it's like fine. It can land, and then just like, but I'm like, you know, just like my gosh, like someone blew a motor. There's oil, there's some things. So it's just like straight steering wheel, hit the brakes, try to like get the speed down and then drive into it. And then I came through, like I'm in it and I'm like smelling it while I'm also like starting to see again coming on the other side. And it's, it's barbecue smoke. Someone in the morning has decided to start breakfast and they're making all these like German bratwurst and it's just like billowing smoke in over the track. So I think that was a pretty funny moment. And like, huge relief right continuing on with the lap and as soon as i got within radio range because back at that time it was 2000 and you know six seven eight like we didn't have the repeaters to have radio all over the track so we had it like three three miles from the paddocks and three miles after so when i came in range i asked the team when is the time for breakfast i'm hungry because like the, the the smell of like their barbecuing like made me hungry i bet <laughs> have you ever raced watkins Glen or sonoma at all Sonoma I raced a lot. Watkins Glen uh, is still on my bucket list. Got it. What's driving on all those turns and all those S's at Sonoma like? Uh, it's really fun. I've done, I've done it so much now that I don't think too much about it. But when I started out and like drove Sonoma the first time, it's, it's disorienting in the beginning. Like you come up the first one and then it's the right and down and then up another one. And it's like, which crest am I on? Uh, but, it, you know, as anything, you learn. And I think the first time I was there was actually, um, I, it was actually raining and I was on a tire that was not very good for the rain. And it was one of those like tippy toeing around with a competitor, like kind of catching, you know, so like, yeah, but it, I, I love Sonoma is a really fun technical track. That's amazing. What was winning the European championship in sports cars like in 2000? Uh, so, so that was the, uh, so that was the, uh, Swedish endurance cup. So not, not European Swedish endurance cup. So that, um, I was really fun because it was, um, it was in a high hype kind of period had just started in that series. Uh, so like larger teams came in with larger budgets and like more modern equipment and the GT class had, you know, some famous names in it that would come in and drive. So it was like really fast cool like porsche gt cars you know like from from relatively well off you know individuals and teams with you know sponsors and corporations behind it so it felt really cool and when we came to to the banquet to celebrate it's like when it really hit me we we're all sitting at this very fancy restaurant in in stockholm the capital of sweden and you know the big trophies are there and we get to go on the stage and you're wearing like a you know a suit and and you know you pour the champagne into the big like trophy and share that um it was amazing because i think as i mentioned like during the season after my first win there it was almost like what's next what's next i wasn't really thinking about it until like after that's when you take stock and you're like wow this is actually pretty cool there's some pretty no notable names that's been in the series and like yeah we were the most consistent we won a lot but we were all you know not everybody was in every race on the points way it was kind of relatively easy battle but it's also like it's never easy to finish these races just point blank like a 12 hour long race like that you know just finishing is the hard part yeah i know what you mean have you ever raced against names like nick Janssen and uh 
uh, Vincenzo Zaspiri and all those GT Nick drivers, was, or no? Yeah, I think Nick was before my time. I'm he might have jumped into to one of these cars in one of these endurance series, just like as a friend, you know, like with some team at some stage. But I, I I don't know if Nick. There's there is another few names that would drop in and and drive, which was like made it cool. Um, but yeah, I think he was slightly before my time. Um, but yeah, I, I raised some other pretty, pretty like talented drivers that's, you know, one in their Daytona class and who won, you know, in their Le Mans debut and things like that. Yeah. So actually, this comes to, yeah, oh, I was actually at the Nürburgring, like right next to me was Heinz Holler and Frensen and, and qualified next to me. He's, he's that's a amazing. Form, you know, former Formula One driver. Yeah. Quite impressive, man. F1 is pretty big in Europe, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it's huge. Yeah. Have you met any big names in F1? Um, I think I think he's actually the only one I have met from from F1, except for the the race engineer Rob Gustafsson that, that was my engineer at the in two thousand one. Yeah. Remind me who it was you met again. Uh, I met Heinz Harald Frensen. Ah, got it. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, it was fun. He drove a Gumpert. It was called a Gumpert Apollo at the time, and we were in a Porsche GT3 RS. Got it. So when did you come to America and race in the Trans Am series? Uh, I came to the States formally in 2008, or like that's when I actually moved. Um, and I ended up uh, racing in the Trans Am series 11 years later. 2019 is when I started in Trans Am. Quite impressive. Did you start with Trans Am or TA2 or which one was it? I started with uh, Super GT. So the endurance car we had for the Western Endurance Championship, we dabbled a bit with, you know, some sprint racing in between the endurance races. Um, and we had uh, an event shared at Sonoma with Trans Am. So I was in this U United States Touring Car Championship at the time. And the Trans Am folks or someone had talked to someone and came over to me and said, hey, if you can find some Pirelli tires, they will invite you to run in the Trans Am in the Super GT class with your car. And I'm like, wow, that's cool. That would be awesome. And I'm just like, wow, that's really cool. Like, that's kind of a big deal. Like Trans Am is like a legacy, you know? And I was like, I didn't really look at it because it's been kind of out of reach for me from, from a budget perspective and been looking at it. And here comes an opportunity. And my team owner was like, yeah, man, Richard Migliori, who built and fielded this car for, you know, more than a decade and amazing individual and team owner. He was like, yeah. And he knows like all the le racing legacy and history, all the people that have been in that series we're doing it see if you can find the tires i walked over to the tire shop we went to the scrap heap on the back of the shop and pulled out four slicks that would fit on our wheels and stuck them on the car um and because we had conflicts with scheduling like i couldn't qualify but they were like no you're good we've seen your lap times you're okay just start from the back and like you know we know you will keep it together we've seen you know we've seen your history so uh just just don't like battle the current like t2 cars and stuff too much and we ran through the field and because that car is an endurance car, it's set up to have speed for a long, long time. And the TU2 cars has a tendency to fall off a bit more towards the end of the race. So I finished fourth overall in the end in, in amongst the TA and TU2 cars with this Super GT car. After that, they gave us lead ballast. Uh, we had to change our wing to a single element rear wing and we had to race our car in order to make it less competitive. I see what you mean. Have you won in the series yet or no? Yeah, so I won the championship then. It was a few races. There weren't too many competitors. I won the, basically the Super GT championship of Trans Am in 2019 and again in 2020. Um, and then um, I think the, 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 you know, one of the fun parts, I think we finished fourth or fifth or something like that in, in like the national mashup when all the Western and national teams go together to Coda, to Circuit of the Americas. Uh, we finished fifth there um, against much more modern cars with ABS and paddle shifters and things like that. So, I mean, I think it was a pretty good for a regional kind of endurance racing team that just like hopped into Trans Am. Um, won the next year on the West Coast. And then I went into TA2 in 2021 because uh, I because I just like got drawn to those cars and uh, the endurance race cars. I mean, it's an endurance race car. We were having fun and sprint racing with it, but we wanted to bring it back to to the big, uh, you know, 24-hour, 25-hour races. 
Got it. Were you in Nashville during the Grand Prix weekend in 2021 for TA2? I, I was there. Uh, I was I was there 2022. I missed 2021. It was on my calendar, but we blew a motor in Portland uh, just a couple of weeks before. Um, and the, the the investment to go to Nashville, first time event for the team to like swap the motors and like fi first of all, we were in a three car team and you know needed to try and keep all cars going and i was leading the championship and this was competitive so um we didn't want to take the risk and like strip another car's motor send it to nashville have a problem because we rushed it uh at such a big one so we i missed it and i was very sad i was very very bummed that i missed that nashville event in 21 but i was able to go in 2022 instead and um yeah and worked out anyway